Mr. Speaker, Mr. Vice President, members of Congress, distinguished guests, and fellow Americans. For the first time in nine years, there are no Americans fighting in Iraq. Well, the president has largely outsourced a lot of the protection for the infrastructure that we have built in Iraq to State Department contractors. Also, President Obama lobbied the al-Maliki government in Baghdad uh, tremendously to keep U.S. forces in Iraq and has also expanded U.S. presence in the Persian Gulf. Our auto industry was on the verge of collapse. Some even said we should let it die. The auto industry wasn't about to die. A couple of firms may have been on the verge of death. But that's what's supposed to happen when you make bad decisions. Ford, Honda, Toyota, the other U.S. auto companies could have reaped the benefits of GM's death. That's what's supposed to happen with competition. With a million jobs at stake, I refused to let that happen. A million jobs were never at stake. That was hyperbole, part of a public relations campaign put out by Detroit. In exchange for help, we demanded responsibility. Talk about responsibility. The administration broke the law to bail out these two companies. The Chrysler bailout had another problem in that it subverted the rights of the secured creditors, the more senior creditors under bankruptcy law, such as bondholders and others, uh, in favor of the United Auto Workers and other uh, less secured junior creditors. And not only does that violate bankruptcy law, but that constitutes a takings under the Constitution's Fifth Amendment. We have a huge opportunity at this moment to bring manufacturing back. First of all, manufacturing never left, so it's, there's no need for manufacturing to be back. Tonight, my message to business leaders is simple. Ask yourselves what you can do to bring jobs back to your country. It's not the responsibility of business to create jobs in the United States. The responsibility of business is to their shareholders, to reap profits. But it is the responsibility and obligation of policymakers to create an environment that is conducive to investment in the United States. The Obama administration has failed at that. Right now, companies get tax breaks for moving jobs and profits overseas. That is nonsense. U.S. companies do not get special breaks for moving jobs and profits overseas. In fact, the U.S. government pushes U.S. companies overseas with our punishingly high corporate tax rate of 40%. Our 40% tax rate compares to a global average corporate rate of just 23%. If you're an American manufacturer, you should get a bigger tax cut. If you're a high-tech manufacturer, we should double the tax deduction you get for making your products here. And if you want to relocate in a community that was hit hard when a factory left town, you should get help financing a new plant, equipment, or training for new workers. That isn't going to work. We need a cross-the-board tax cut. If you give special benefits to certain types of companies, that is just going to encourage more game playing by companies to get those special breaks. For less than 1% of what our nation spends on education each year, we've convinced nearly every state in the country to raise their standards for teaching and learning. What the Obama administration has done with Race to the Top, $4.35 billion out of the so-called stimulus, is twist states' arms into adopting national standards. Not necessarily better standards, not necessarily higher standards. Experts in pedagogy and curricula disagree about the quality of the standards, but they have forced every state for the first time to adopt federal standards and federal tests, despite the research being very clear that national standards, national tests, have no correlation with better academic achievement. It's not enough for us to increase student aid. We can't just keep subsidizing skyrocketing tuition. We'll run out of money. The president says we can't keep increasing student aid because we simply can't afford it, and that's true. The reason we can't afford it is because the main thing federal student aid does is let colleges raise their prices with impunity. That's why it's so troubling that the president, at the same time he has said that, has urged Congress to increase student aid. This Congress needs to stop the interest rates on student loans from doubling in July. Extend the tuition tax credit we started, doubling the number of work-study jobs in the next five years. But that's what the federal government does. It plays Santa Claus in college all the time, despite clear evidence that all that money does is let colleges get richer and richer. Because of federal investments, renewable energy use has nearly doubled. And thousands of Americans have jobs because of it. 
Well, it's very interesting he said thousands. It turns out that uh, the Obama uh, plan of providing loan guarantees for green energy firms, which is about a $35 billion project, has produced, according to his own Department of Energy, about 35, 3,600 jobs. That's about $5 million per job. It's time to end the taxpayer giveaways to an industry that rarely has been more profitable and double down on a clean energy industry that never has been more promising. It's a good thing to get rid of subsidies to the oil industry, and that's something that we've called for for a long time now. But to turn around and take away subsidies from one part of the energy economy and then to double down with subsidies somewhere else misses the lesson that we should have learned, which is that subsidies don't provide anything that the markets wouldn't have otherwise provided if the technology has merit. Help manufacturers eliminate energy waste in their factories and give businesses incentives to upgrade their buildings. Their energy bills will be $100 billion lower over the next decade. Manufacturers already have plenty of incentives to do exactly that. It's called cost savings. All right? Manufacturers have every incentive to reduce input costs to maximize profit. If it's truly the case that energy efficiency investments would save manufacturers $100 billion over a decade, that's incentive enough. The government doesn't need to put guns to businesses' heads to get them to do things which are manifestly in their best interest. All it does is has the taxpayer underwrite corporate activities that stockholders should be paying for themselves. American consumers finally have a watchdog in Richard Cordray with one job to look out for them. Well, that's an unconstitutional job because that's part of Dodd-Frank, which has a whole host of separation of powers problems, creating these unaccountable bureaucracies that are a law unto themselves. And Cordray's appointment to that one unconstitutional job is itself unconstitutional because it was done during a recess that was not a recess. We need to change our tax codes so that people like me and an awful lot of members of Congress pay our fair share of taxes. One of the problems with higher tax rates is that they don't necessarily translate into more tax revenue. Rich people in 1988, with a top rate of 28%, actually paid five times as much to the IRS as they did in 1980, when the tax rate was way up at 70%. Pass a simple rule that all judicial and public service nominations receive a simple up or down vote within 90 days. Last year, 97% of the president's nominees were confirmed by the Senate. And if we're talking judges, he's confirmed district judges at a higher rate than President Bush. And overall, the only reason he hasn't had more confirmed than Bush is because he hasn't appointed them, he hasn't nominated them. I'm a Democrat, but I believe what Republican Abraham Lincoln believed. The government should do for people only what they cannot do better by themselves and no more. That's why my education reform offers more competition and more control for schools and states. If President Obama really wants to do what's best for most Americans in education, he'll get the federal government out of the classroom. It spends hundreds of billions of dollars that does no good. There's no constitutional authority for the federal government to be involved. And what people really need in education is something the federal government can't give them. And that's they need school choice. They need to control that money that comes from states and local districts and be able to take it to any school they want. We've begun to wind down the war in Afghanistan. 10,000 of our troops have come home. 23,000 more will leave by the end of this summer. President Obama tripled the number of troops in Afghanistan. He increased the number of drone strikes in neighboring Pakistan, and he authorized the raid that killed Osama bin Laden. So we have many victories, more than enough victories under our belt to withdraw the troops from Afghanistan. Even the 68,000 figure that he wants to draw down to will still be twice as many troops that we have in Afghanistan than before he took office. A year ago, Gaddafi was one of the world's longest serving dictators, a murderer with American blood on his hands. Today, he is gone. Well, I think that President Obama glossed over the fact that we intervened in Libya without congressional authorization. He also ignored the fact that he has these sort of secret lists that he uses to assassinate American citizens without due process. These are sort of the broader issues that Obama sort of neglected to mention in a State of the Union address. America is determined to prevent Iran from getting a nuclear weapon, and I will take no options off the table to achieve that goal. A peaceful resolution to the nuclear standoff with Iran is the best course of action. Two former Mossad agents, uh, former Secretary of Defense, former Joint Chiefs of Staff, uh, former CIA directors have all come out and cautioned against an attack on Iran. Thank you. God bless you. And God bless the United States of America.